States Marine Corps Reserve, and it's a certificate of appreciation presented to the President of the United States for outstanding support of Toys for Tots. So thank you very much, sir. Well, thank you very much. You fellas have given me this no agreement for no less force cavalry. <laughs> <laughs> well, just one minute. Something from Nancy and myself, I thank you very much for that. The Toys for Tots program. Thank you very much, sir. Just just little souvenirs for your visit here. White House on them. Right. Get your dad to teach you how to work it. Yeah. 
Which page is that? Okay, Thank you, sir. Thank you, Very Thank you, sir. Bye. 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 Council to come up with some evaluation of our welfare programs and to provide a strategy for poor families and welfare recipients to see if we can't get around to what always should have been the goal of welfare. And that is not to see how long you could be to keep people on, but how quickly could you make them independent of it and put them back out into the, the mainstream. And that certainly has not been the goal of the welfare programs that we have. For Sometimes I think there's an old rule that is maintain the bureaucracy <laughs> <laughs> so they became a permanent clientele. I know that many of you have contributed in this effort, and I wanted to meet with you prior to making the final decision so I could hear firsthand your advice on making the system more pro-family and uh, efficient and most important to, as I say, encourage people to become productive. I know that true reform can't occur until many of the innovative suggestions contained in the report are tried on an experimental basis in the state and local level. In fact, true reform may well end up being nothing more than those very experiments, the first tests of how individuals, families, and communities can work together with welfare resources to increase self-respect and reduce dependency. Particular interest to me is hearing how some of these approaches have been successful and how they can be expanded to other communities. I may have told you, some of you before in, in previous meetings, about a letter that I have kept to this day that I received as I was governor. When we started our welfare reforms in California, I received a letter from a young woman, several children, told me how she had been on welfare and that. How much uh, this had meant to her and so forth, and I thought, oh boy, I'm going to get it now. <laughs> and it turned out the opposite of what I thought. She told me that she had even turned down offers of marriage rather than give up the security of that. Well, it was a security blanket, that check. Then she said, my announcement came in the welfare reforms we were going to undertake. And she said, I'd always felt down inside it couldn't go on forever. <laughs> she said, I thought this was it. So she said, I took $600 that I'd saved from my welfare checks, and I went to Alaska with my children to where there's some relatives up there. And she got a job. She's been working, all of this. She was writing to thank me because she said, I never would have left if I hadn't been scared off by your suggestion. <laughs> And she wound up with a line that I think topped everything. She said, it sure beats daytime TV. 
Well, I came to listen, not to talk. President, I came to listen too, but let me introduce you to the. Meeting with representatives of Yeshua University, 18th December, cabinet room, closed coverage, uh, camera person, foreman, recorders, butler, 6 and G. a small theological school by a tiny group of immigrants that came to our blessed country down in lower Manhattan 100 years ago. We still have our seminaries and affiliates, but we're now a major university. The Medical College, you know, the Einstein College of Medicine, the law school, the Benjamin Cardozo School of Law, the Graduate School of Social Work, the Psychology, and undergraduate schools for both men and women in New York, in various sections of New York. Just a few days ago, we announced the creation of our new Sison School of Business, and we greeted Mr. Sims here this afternoon. Mr. President, we're proud that you've joined us for the celebration of our centennial, and the president of Yeshiva University, Dr. Norman Lamb, is proud to bestow our highest academic honor upon you, the honor president of our country. Dr. Lamb, I'm privileged to present the President of the United States, Ronald Reagan, for the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. As President, you are placed to stand for your unique personality on a new era in our great country. As a unique American institution, Yeshiva University is proud to celebrate its 100th birthday in that era. Yeshiva University draws confidence from the confidence of the Reagan era. And we are confident that this larger confidence will neither fail nor falter. A Jewish sage once said, when a man is able to take abuse and not respond in kind, he is worthy to become a leader upon whom the sun will shine. Even during crises and criticism, you have never wavered from basic human decency. You have never lost your sunny sense of humor. And we know you will never permit a passing cloud to dim the luster of your leadership. Today, 
as we approach our holiday season, we offer you, Mr. President, the gift of a Hanukkah menorah or candelabra. During the time of trial for the Jewish people, the menorah symbolized both faith and freedom. Hanukkah is a time that we thank the Lord, saying, Thou didst deliver the strong in the hands of the weak, the many in the hands of the few, the wicked in the hands of the righteous. Surely a source of courage and hope for all peoples. And the oil that was to last but one day, miraculously lasted for eight days. As we honor you today, Mr. President, we hope that the light of your leadership continues to shine ever more brightly for the remainder of the eight years of your presidency. It is my privilege to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Laws honoris causa. In token thereof, I hand you this diploma. And uh, Mr. President, this gift of the menorah of candelabrum, it comes from the why don't we try to regroup for one more time? Oh, yeah. 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 Back up. This comes from Italy in the 18th century. And I want to just give you, if I may, the uh, Jefferson letter. We recently, recently acquired a letter from Thomas Jefferson to the Jewish community, giving his uh, very, very wonderful evaluation of what America means in terms of tolerance and religious freedom. I think it would be nice if we gave this to the President of the United States, a successor of the Jefferson. Along with that, Mr. President, go two things. Number one, our prayers for your health and recovery, and the Hebrew words, the ancient Hebrew words, we wish you the Kurash Lema, a speedy recovery. And we hope that if your calendar permits it, and we're confident that your health will, you'll join us next Hanukkah at the university at our celebration. Well, thank you very much. I, I hope and pray that I can accept that invitation when the time comes. I'm deeply grateful for this. I do know the meaning of it. And for that letter also, Jefferson's words about religious tolerance. I think our country probably more than any other nation has lived up to those words. And Yeshiva University is an example. A small school that started in the Lower East Side of New York 100 years ago and today, a university of 7,000 students undergraduate schools that make it great in addition to its undergraduate schools. I must say one thing with regard to the honorary degree. You have compounded a sense of guilt that I have nursed for some 50 odd years now because I always had a suspicion that the first degree I received was honor. <laughs> This is, this is wonderful of you, and I am very grateful. Thank you, Mr. Oh, yes. That's right. The ring. Thank you. We also have a hood that we're going to present to you. You want to be wearing that hood on this car, and the hood is placed on you. That's what it will do. We'll do it in the proper style.